listen we typically do not take much stock into madrid right like we collectively as a tennis community have pretty much agreed that madrid is the outlier among the clay court season conditions are so different that it really typically doesn't have much of a bearing on roland garros beyond the added confidence boost of an extra masters well we're gonna make an exception to that this year and that is because what Carlos Alcaraz pulled off in Madrid this year was nothing short of momentous. It was quite literally historic, one of one. When I look back on this tournament, it is going to be right up there with Toronto 2014 with Joe Wilfred Sanga as one of the most impressive Masters victories that I have ever seen and without a doubt has to be up there with the greatest Masters of all time. We have seen this kid fill up the superlatives, the first to do X, Y, and Z since this all-time great the youngest to do this, the youngest to do that, and now, after his week in Madrid, he becomes the first person ever, and the only person to have ever beaten Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in one clay court tournament. Oh, and by the way, if that wasn't enough, he did this one and two days, I believe, after turning 19. Again momentous monumental just when you thought after his first slip up of the year in monte carlo that maybe he may be coming back to earth nope right back to business with titles in barcelona and then madrid and this madrid one will go down in history so let's just go match by match i believe in my last video about carlos after he won in Miami, I said that a new th part of his game seems to stick out every week and he seems to be getting every single week. And just when you think you have his game down pad, well, something new stuck out this week too in Madrid. Of course, his first match, I don't think there was much notable about that, took care of business against Basilashvili, who can be dangerous to anyone given just the raw power that he possesses but Alcaraz took care of him relatively straight forward the next four matches that he played in Madrid just remarkable stuff he played Cam Nori after that and unlike the last time they faced off in Indian Wells where Carlos was just redlining and pretty much blew Nori off the court with little that Cam could do about it he was very much in this match. Alcaraz was a little bit off in this match, and as a result, it really turned into a really gritty and grindy match where Alcaraz pretty much had to put on the hard hat considering he wasn't in one of those zones where he could just hit Cam off the court. And, you know, it took about three hours nori never really gave up in this match even in the third set alcaraz had to come up with some pretty special shots to go ahead of break and even hold nori off as he was threatening to break back several times in the decider but at the end of the day on his birthday he was victorious in a match that was i want to say in the ballpark of around two and a half to three hours long pretty demanding and his reward was Rafael Nadal the next for a set there he was absolutely zoning and had hit Nadal off the court um, he had already begun to come down leak a couple of errors before he took a nasty spill obviously in the second set rolled over his ankle and from that point on it really did look like Rafa was gonna ride some of the momentum to the finish line and you know what was a very promising clash had been derailed by this unfortunate Alcaraz injury however you know we've seen how mentally tough this kid is already well beyond his years and with Nadal charging early in that second set, I believe had Alcaraz down at 15:30 in his first or second serve game of the deciding set. 
um, Carlos came up with some special stuff really reset very very impressively and you know came up with what will probably become one of the more iconic match points with some incredible scrambling and capped off with a banana shot pass on Rafael Nadal a shot that Rafa has hit on just about whoever you can think of throughout the years I didn't think it was a particularly taxing match given the state of Nadal's game at the moment, but nonetheless, you know, it has to do a world of good to Alcaraz's confidence for the next time he faces off with Nadal, you know, finally getting a win under his belt. I say finally as if they haven't played only three times now, it only took him two tries to notch that first win, but... In spite of it being ugly, no doubt it will be a landmark win in the career of Carlos Alcaraz. And then we really get to the most impressive match of this run, which was the semi-final against Novak Djokovic. Probably, well definitely, a contender for match of the year. This one was awesome, awesome drama throughout and... Even some very stunning quality, I think, in the second half of the match. Djokovic was coming into this looking more like Novak Djokovic after a tough start to this clay court season. And, you know, as we know now, at the time of me recording this, it is after Rome, so he's come even further since then. But I would say at this point, Djokovic was like an 8 out of 10 around that level. And... We had really been waiting for this matchup pretty much since Monte Carlo when it first became a projected quarterfinal, I believe. And, you know, there was a lot of hypothetical stuff that we could think about with uh, Djokovic potentially putting the one area of slight weakness with the Alcaraz serve under pressure. And... That definitely did manifest itself throughout this match, but it also uncovered some new layers of what I referred to earlier in the video of new things that we saw Carlos Alcaraz still excels at and really was able to put those to good use against the best of the best. From the get-go, Alcaraz broke the Djokovic serve, but throughout this set, it was very, very difficult for Carlos to hold serve. He had to hold off Novak, um, I believe, on a couple of breakpoints early, and pretty much every service game of his was tough. It felt like you could feel the break coming at some point it seemed inevitable and Novak on the other hand after that first game was holding serve at you know rates that you wouldn't think against Alcaraz it seemed all too easy Carlos was barely winning points on the Djokovic serve through the first set and it definitely was a combination of Alcaraz having a bit of an off returning day as well as Novak serving stunningly as I noted in my video following his victory in Rome. But what I will say stuck out the most to me in this set was in spite of Novak, you know, breaking, I believe it was at 4-3 with Alcaraz serving midway through the first, um, Alcaraz did not wilt the rest of the set and you see that so often when Djokovic applies pressure to his opponents you can go from a winning position to being up against it so quickly and it is very jarring for other opponents who you know you can't even blame them but you've seen them wilt under that pressure but Carlos Alcaraz still impressively enough was able to send this into a tie break and even in that breaker you know it's so hard to beat Novak in tie breaks over the last couple of years with how much his spot serving has improved and just how he seems to lock down never make errors and he got out to a very quick start in this breaker I think he was 5-1 and then 6-2 up in the breaker and it could have been much more 
disheartening than it ended up being, but Alcaraz fought his way back all the way to 6-5 and really made Novak put him away in this set. And of course, ultimately he did, but you know, those are the little things that really make you admire this kid's mentality and even in spite of all that losing the set he would have had every excuse in the book to have just mailed it in in the second he was coming off a couple of draining matches and you know nobody had beaten Nadal and Djokovic to this point in one clay court tournament but no you know in spite of all that Alcaraz just put his head down and just hung around would be my best way of describing it even when he still was not firing on all cylinders um i do think that one of the things that stuck out to me in his kick serve was one of those things that let him hang around there i don't think this was djokovic's best returning performance by any stretch of the imagination he was missing a lot of returns that i think you would typically at least put in play but um carlos really was able to well for one display that he's already a very competent serve and volleyer he was getting novak stretched wide on his kick serve a lot and he was hitting some terrific volleys to finish points serving and volleying very effectively and he set up his one two of course very impressively at a pretty frequent rate and those easy patterns were enough to keep him in this set and novak did have his chances i believe he had two games where he had a break point at least and wasn't able to capitalize and then once we got to 5-6 Alcaraz's last chance to avoid a breaker he just played a stupendous game in addition to you know the kick serve setting up the 1-2 as well as the serve and volley I don't think I've seen anyone recently at least have as much success drop shotting Novak Djokovic as he did and he was really putting that to good use I feel comfortable saying at this point that Carlos Alcaraz has the best drop shot on tour and definitely one of the best I've ever seen. It's damn near automatic that he cashes in and wins the point on it. I've never really seen anything quite like it. But once he got to the decider, that's when it really seemed like his game clicked. Um, Throughout, it felt like he had control, but Novak just would not let it get away from him. Alcaraz had several opportunities to pull away and put some separation in between him and Novak early in the third, but Djokovic, clutch as ever, just refused to give in. And again, so many times when Novak is able to save opportunities like that, Opponents will blink eventually and you've seen it happen to the best of them when they're up against this guy But on the other end of the net this 19 year old kid was equally up to the task and resilient He just kept on coming and asking the questions of Djokovic and pretty much every time Novak was coming through for Stalkeras to come through in a breaker where you definitely would have favored Novak but you know some very courageous cuts in this breaker and ultimately it was very fitting that the last point of the match ended up being kick serve out to the backhand setting up a 1-2 open court forehand that Alcaraz of course cashed in on and again this match neared around four hours and I've praised the mentality I've praised some of the technical stuff that he did throughout this week how about the kids physicality the stamina i feel like it's very rare that players come in and just have stamina like this because you know you can say youth contributes to it but typically so many players have to build up that stamina over time it's not out of the box like this him and people like nadal in the past seem to be the exception as far as that's concerned 
but you know Carlos is just a beast and we've seen it throughout this year we saw him pull double duty in both Rio and Barcelona multiple times throughout those weeks and still ended up having more than enough to put in some spectacular displays to win very easy finals at both of those events in addition to that you know before he bulked up and seemed to build up his physicality he'd already gone through back-to-back -back five setters at the US Open last year and this was a very taxing run to the final for Alcaraz so much so that I actually kind of had a sneaky feeling going into the final that Zverev was going to end up being the one victorious because for one I've seen this with Dominic Team so many times where the signature wins come before the final and ultimately someone else ends up getting all the glory as a result of either fatigue or just having a letdown after those wins. But nope, this final ended up being the easiest match of the week for Carlos Alcaraz, just toyed with the world number three at Zverev's best event of his career and of this year by far and yet Carlos just looked like he was in a completely different class than Sasha. This wonder child just made absolutely light work of Zverev and you know all credit to him you cannot say enough just one of the most impressive titles you will ever see and as I said earlier, you typically don't learn much from Madrid for Roland Garros, you can't extrapolate much. This time, as has so often been the case with the discourse around Alcaraz, it's different, it feels different. I feel more confident than ever as a result of this run that Carlos Alcaraz will be a top true contender at Roland Garros in a week. Unlike some of the past youngsters that we have touted to be the next big thing over the last couple of generations, I have absolutely no reason to believe that he's going to end up flopping in best of five or it's going to take a while for him to get acclimated to best of five. He is different. It is just that simple. And I for one cannot wait to see what he does in Paris. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. This particular title in Madrid definitely deserved its own video, so if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If so, it would be much appreciated if you could give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it, and of course, I will see you all in the next one.